you know, it's preposterous to think of any of us walking around the world for seven years and 22,000 miles. My name is Paul Salopek and I'm a journalist and National Geographic fellow. Over the past two years, I've walked out of Ethiopia and across the Middle East as part of the Out of Eden Walk project, whose goal is to retrace the pathways of the first human ancestors who migrated across the earth, all the while telling the stories of the modern people I meet along the way. Paul is walking out every step of the way and practicing the art of slow, what we call slow journalism. That is, he is, he is taking his time because he is walking. He's moving at three miles an hour. He's encountering people face to face, going in depth in the places that he covers. We thought it was perfect to help kids originally with geography concepts and some of our social science standards to really bring them to life. We know kids are much more engaged when they're talking about what's going on in the world today. So this project provided a perfect springboard into some current day issues. You know, he's, he's encountered Syrian refugees in the countries he's walked through in the Middle East. He's encountering climate, the effects of climate change everywhere he's been. So these are the stories that are shaping our, our lives. I rearranged my entire class schedule to take the class immediately. Um, I heard about it and one, I was like, okay, this is amazing, this guy is walking so far and he's doing it all interactive. He's created hundreds and hundreds of dispatches and other assets that modern journalists, uh, especially journalism students, can use to hone their own skill set because he's using the tools of a modern multimedia journalist, a digital journalist. Lightweight equipment really counts. I've tested a variety of devices over the past 4,000 miles. But the hardware is the easy part. The real creative work, the gathering information, the crafting of stories, begins with an older but much more sophisticated technology. And that's your nerve endings. It's different than what most kids get to experience. What I'm using the, the walk for in my classroom is to teach students to first of all slow down. Then the next phase is to send them out into to the community and doing this sort of in-depth interviewing and storytelling that Paul is practicing. I want them to apply those lessons on a micro scale in their own communities. We are in the beautiful city of Richmond, Virginia. This is Shaco Bottom. The murals in Richmond are really interesting because they sort of tie the city together. And so our walk was kind of a way to get to investigate that a little bit more. We decided to focus on this project because they're currently talking about creating a stadium and a new shopping center, a high rise and a parking garage. But this area is full of history. The experience of slow journalism and walking everywhere was really interesting because it really opened your eyes to everyday things you don't usually see. Go to Paul's website and spend half an hour browsing around and exploring the, the assets that are there. I think you will be blown away. Uh, the mapping, the ph photography, the videography, the sound files, the interviews with people. After we're, we watch the amazing introductory videos that Paul supplies, then we go on our own walk. So we take our kids on a slow journalism walk, and they have clipboards, cameras, all these things, and they put together um, a story of their walk. But we tell them they have to be slow journalists, too. It's, it's the basics of journalism. It's what every reporter you know, of the past generation past generations has known about getting good material. You have to pay close attention, you look for the telling detail, you interview people in depth, you hang around, you build rapport and trust with your subjects, and then you write from a place inside you rather than just kind of pushing information around. The Poetzer Center has written some great lessons. Their standard space, their 21st century, um, they've gotten the technology standards integrated into them, but they do give teachers a step-by-step -step way, if they're new to the project, that they're able to just take this lesson, it's completely written from start to finish, and just do it. And teachers have told me over and over again how powerful the lessons are, how well they work with kids, how engaged the kids are, how easy it is for them to implement them, and also how much 
it has helped their writing. I think the biggest lesson that I took at least from doing our walk and reading Paul's work was just that attention to detail and being aware, more aware of your environment. I think that really made our project better. We had many teachers mention that the kids were writing double the amount that they normally were because they were so engaged. And this was really interesting because I got to write much more long form copy, learn a lot about journalism. I feel like it changed how I write and how I gather my insights for my writing forever. Like I will always think differently after taking this class. That's all they want to do. That's all they want to talk about. It, it's just, it's not learning worksheet style. It's not learning because the teacher wants them to learn it. It's because they want to know, because they want to, they want part of that in their life. It's, they see the meaning. They see how it changes how they view the world. Any teacher that is seeking to open those doors of understanding in a student will find that the Out of Eden Walk is an extraordinary tool for helping students get beyond the uh, restrictions of their own perspective and broaden their horizons and, and learn more about the world. Parents say that this is a project that has connected with their child in a way that most learning does not, that it's the first time that they've come home and shared what they're learning with them and the excitement and they want to know more and the, the questioning um, and that they're, they're so happy because they just want their kids to love school and these projects are what creates a true love of learning for kids in our schools. Join us for the journey. I'll see you on the trail. There are only 17,000 miles to go.